Let's do a quick overview of the three different types of linear equations. All right, so the first one we went through was the slope intercept form. Now it looked like y equals mx plus b. After that, we went through the point slope form. It looked like y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And last but not least, we went through general form. It looked like a x plus b y plus c equals zero. Now each of these three forms of the linear equation have their uses, have places where they're better than the others, and have places where they're not quite as good as the others. Let's start with the first one, slope-intercept form. In this form, you've got your m, which is your slope, and you've got your b, which is your y-intercept. I find this one to be the simplest to work with. It's got fewer pieces. Every one of those pieces means something, so you can look at the equation and give you exactly a piece off of the graph. And if you're going to do algebra with it, it often is one of the easiest ones to work with. This one works best if you've got the slope and you've got a nice, neat y-intercept. Next, we moved on to point-slope form. And this has two parts as well. We've got an m, which is still our slope. We've also got a point, and that is x1 and y1. Just remember for the point-slope form, it is going to be the opposite signs of what you see in the equation. This form of the linear equation, one of the reasons we use this form of the linear equation is because it's easy to write out an equation. If you have the slope and a point on the line, you can write it. It's also the best form to use if you're given two, point, given two points. It's also a good form to use if your y-intercept is in a nice, neat, easy-to-read number. Our third form is the general form. Now those a, b, and c coefficients, they don't tell us anything directly. They're coefficients. Now you can use them to find things, but it's not as neat and pretty as saying the slope in the other ones or the y-intercept. A couple of details you have to remember about this one. a has to be a positive number, and a, b, and c all have to be integers. No fractions, no decimals, no rational numbers. And to take it a step further, A needs to be positive. In many ways, this general form is more complicated to work with than the other two. Because the, the pieces in there, the A, B, and the C, don't give us anything directly off the graph. But we do teach it, because the general form lines up nicer with the other equations we're going to deal with later on. Not necessarily in Foundation Pre-Calc 10, but in Foundations and Pre-Calc 20s and 30s. Other uh, equations, uh, parabolas, cubics, any of the other functions will follow that general form. So those are the three types of linear equations and some tips as to when each form would be necessary.